I'm John. This podcast is submitted as part of an assessment for a sports science outdoor activities degree at Bangor University. This podcast will focus specifically on the skill of the kayak sprint style, specifically in the discipline of canoe polo. However, many of the techniques and skills used in the sprint style are transferable into other kayaking disciplines. This podcast is focused towards intermediate and advanced performers with a competent forward paddling technique and confident boat skills. Before we get started and on the water, it's important you've got the correct equipment. Some form of thermal base layer to maintain warmth while training, a spray deck that fits your boat to keep the water out, some form of footwear to protect your feet while walking around off the water and stop you wearing holes in your own foot while training in your boat, buoyancy aid to keep yourself afloat if you do swim or fall out of the kayak, the kayak itself and a paddle. Finally, before getting on the water and commencing your training session, it is vital to foot perform some sort of dynamic warm up to get your blood pumping, get yourself ready to train. So going for a jog around the car park before getting on the water and mobilizing your upper body before getting on will help you perform at a higher standard and prevent injury. Okay, once you're on the water, it's important you don't go straight into sprinting flat out. Despite that having done a dynamic water warm up off the water, once on the water, you should progressively increase your paddling intensity, starting off with a gentle paddle around the area you're training in and building it up until you're sprinting at full speed. Okay. Now we're fully warmed up, we can begin the session. The sprint start in a canoe polar game is the crucial moment in every game, as it is the first point where both teams are competing against each other for the ball. So getting the start right starts your game off well, gets your team on the front foot. If you get the sprint start wrong, you'll lose the ball at the start of the game and you'll be permanently on the back foot for the rest of the match. The sprint start in canoe polo is signalled by the referee throwing the ball into the water and blowing on their whistle. It is important while training that you use a similar signal to trigger your own start. If you start by just saying to yourself go in your own head, you won't be getting the same cues as you would be in a match situation. If you can train with a partner who signals you to start your sprint by a whistle blast or a shout, this will help you perform better in a competition situation. Okay, now it's time to get on with the practical aspect of this. I'm going to go and show you a few demos of the sprint start. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, Three, go. Three, two, one, go. Three, two, one, go. Okay, now we've looked at the stroke as a whole, we're going to break it down into the three crucial areas. The boat, the body and the blade. First of all, the boat. We want the boat to be facing in the direction we want to go. We want to try and keep the boat as level as we can across the entire time to enable us to transfer all our power in the direction we want to go. And we don't want the boat rocking forwards and backwards. We want it again to be as level as possible. Next is the body. This is where all the power comes from and where the force from the blade is transferred through into the boat. So, Starting at the feet, it's crucial that they are tightly connected to the footrests so you can push off them. Next, your knees should be pressed into the top of the kayak to enable you to be nice and balanced and secure in the boat. Your backside and lower back should be pressed firmly into the seat of the kayak. Your body wants to be nice and upright in your boat, using your trunk rotation to drive the paddle forwards. Finally, the blade. This is possibly the most crucial part of it. If you don't get the blade right, no matter what you're doing with your body and the boat, you're going to go nowhere. So, we need to ensure that the entire blade surface area is placed firmly in the water. You want the blade to be drawn back alongside the kayak, as close to the centre line as possible. By maintaining the blade as vertical as possible, you can use both arms to drive the boat forwards. With the blade, it is important that you try and keep it as vertical as possible. By doing this, you get maximum blade area in the water. So having the shaft nice and vertical, you're able to pull the paddle through the water in as efficient movement as possible. We will now look at the paddle technique in a bit more detail. Firstly, the key area is the catch. That is when the blade is placed at the front of the boat and is initially drawn on to create the movement. It is important that you place the blade fully in the water. If it is only half in the water, you're only putting in as half as much effort as you can. 
Secondly, power phase. The blade, once fully burnt in the water, wants to be drawn along the side of the kayak. Finally, the release. The blade needs to be lifted out of the water as it reaches your hips. If you keep the blade in the water beyond this point, it will just be lifting water and doing nothing. I hope you have found this podcast on the Canoe Polo Sprint Stuff useful. Now is your turn to go away and practice this. Please ensure for your own safety when you're practicing that you practice with another performer or someone on the bank who is confident in bank-based rescues. Go away, practice and enjoy. See you soon.